I remember coming to church for the first time. I always, in worship is where I remember when I first encountered Jesus because it, it was just one encounter in his presence that changed my life forever. The fact that I'm standing here now is a testimony of who I was when I first encountered Jesus. Nobody talked to me about the Bible. I don't even remember what the sermon was that day, but it was just one encounter, and from then on, my life was different. And then I learned about the power in the name of Jesus. And so our legacies are different because of the power in the name of Jesus. We grieve differently because of the power in the name of Jesus. Our lives are transformed. Addictions are broken. Chains are broken. And so I was just thinking, I was just thinking, what would it look like if the church really knew and lived like they knew the power that there is in the name of Jesus? We would not hold back 
We would not hold back to share our testimonies of the tra transformation that we've experienced. We would pray for people. We would declare his power. And so sing this song with me as a declaration that you know the beauty in his name. The enemy has spoken over us. We thank you, Jesus. You Yours is the glory. Yours is the power. Yours is, yours is the glory, Jesus. Yours is the glory. You are powerful, Jesus. You are powerful. You are powerful, Jesus. We lift our head, we lift our heart. You're the one we want right now, Jesus. The one we want right now. You're the one, the one we want right now. Yeah. The one we want I'm after your goodness, after your strength, after your rest, God. Best in you right now. Best in you right now. Best in you right now. I just feel like we just need to pause and just rest in him. You don't have to prove a thing. Just rest. Just rest, Jesus. Rest, Jesus. Rest in you, Lord. Rest in just lift our hands in this room, in this place, wherever you are. Every person in this room. There is nothing in between you and this healing that he wants to provide for you. He's heard you and your prayers. The sickness that, that you have there's nothing in between your healing. And I think that someone needs to believe in that today. I think someone needs to just drop the, God's not disappointed in you. God never stopped loving you. There's nothing in between you and the Lord. There's nothing in between you and the Father. Your sins were washed away. God, we thank you and we rest. God, there's nothing in between us. We thank you. And so heavy on my heart right now that maybe you're here and your family situation's not great. And if that's you, you're not alone. It's funny that with our family, it's the last thing we surrender to God sometimes. Sometimes we live with a broken family and we don't even surrender it to God and we stop asking God to bring breakthrough in our family. We just accept it like it's written in stone, but we forget that our God is infinite, eternal, and above all. And we just have to stop because could you imagine for a moment what would happen if one family found restoration? Could you imagine? And I sense in my heart so deeply 
that maybe there are people in this room who would say my family's broken that maybe you're in this room and you would say I'm estranged from my family maybe you're in this room and you would say I have no relationship with my father maybe you're in this room and you would say my family has hurt me someone in my family has hurt me and you've carried that for years you've carried that for so long and I'm just here to tell you right now that you can actually just surrender it to God But I want to ask you to believe for something greater than just surrender. I want to ask you to believe that God can bring restoration. Would you just stop and pause right here and just begin to surrender your family, whatever it is. And if you're here in this room and you would say, I need, I need wholeness in my family, would you just put your hand up so someone can pray for you? If that's you and you'd be bold to say, I need wholeness in my family, I need deliverance in my family. If you see someone right now, right here with their hand up, would you just put a hand on them and just pray for them? We know your name is power. We know your name is power. We surrender. We surrender to you, Jesus. Lord, we just believe all across this room that people are being released from the pain, the hurt. God, we're believing right now for all of those who are praying for a loved one who's far from you. God, we're believing right now that you are going to bring them home. God, that you are going to surround them, protect them. God, we're praying for the family member who's struggling with disease. God, we're believing for healing that breaks out because people came together and they had the boldness to declare with faith and belief that you are still a God who heals, still a God who cares. Lord, we're believing, God, right now that people who've been hurt by their family, God, who've been so in depressed and in pain because of what's been done to them, that you're actually beginning to release that pain, God, that people are finding wholeness and freedom in this room from hurt that's been done against them, God, that you're just surrounding them with love. Jesus. Come on, would you praise him if you're believing that healing's happening? Come on, would you just lift his name up? Praise you, Lord. Oh, man. When you walked in, you received communion. Isn't God good? How many of you believe that that freedom was breaking out in this room? How many of you believe that lives were being changed because of his presence? We're not done yet, okay? How many of you are glad we're not done? Amen. How many of you believe there's more? There's more tonight. You got a communion cup when you came in. And when I think about the freedom we have in Christ, and when I think about how we can declare wholeness and truth, I remember that it's all because of the price that was paid. The fact that I can come into the presence of God like I am is because He's done something and He paid the price and tonight as we take communion, we're reminded that Jesus, He took His disciples the night before He was betrayed, He washed their feet, he ate with them and he said, he grabbed a piece of bread and he, he broke it. 
He said, this is my body broken for you. What they didn't know is that he was going to be on a cross and that he was literally going to break for us. And so we can stand here tonight in wholeness and grace because of what he's done. And so God, we just thank you. We remember the price you paid. We remember that you were broken, that you were bruised, you were crushed, God, so that we might have life, God. We're reminded that we don't have to live in shame, anxiety, hurt, or fear because of the price you paid. God, thank you. Thank you. You can take the bread and you can eat that now. same way he took a cup and he said this is my blood and it's poured out for you and I just wonder what they were thinking in that moment and they're like why would your blood be poured out why would you do that the same person who who said it was to the rich young ruler it's it's so hard to enter the kingdom of God and they said it surely it's impossible he said, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than, than for them to enter eternity. What they didn't know is that it required a sacrifice. It required blood. And so we, we, have, we have our hope in Christ because his blood was shed for us. And so as you take the cup tonight, would you remember that grace that leads to repentance. Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for loving us when we didn't deserve it. We thank you for pursuing us when we were lost and never giving up on us. You can take the cup now.
even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop. found a lump on my chest and his lungs he was so scared I hadn't talked to him in a long time that's how you know he was scared because he reached out and I just said we're going to believe and pray that God is going to heal you he literally texted me as I was walking up on stage tonight and said you wouldn't believe it my results came back it's benign <laughs> which is crazy because that's what God does. That's what our God does. And I don't know if you've forgotten or you needed to be reminded. I don't know if you came in and you need healing. But I knew, I knew a week ago that tonight was going to happen, that there was someone in this room that needed healing. God gave me a vision. I was on my way to rehearsal, and I just saw people coming desperate to say, I need healing. I need physical healing. Maybe you have cancer and you need healing. Maybe, maybe you, you have some kind of sickness and you need healing and you know right now because the Holy Spirit is touching you and he's saying, that's you. You need to get prayer tonight. You need to believe again. You need to believe that I can heal you. I just believe God's declaring that. Some of you here, your marriage is on the rocks. You need healing. God it doesn't just heal physical things. He wants to heal your marriage. And you came here and this might be your last chance to get healing and you need to surrender. I don't know what healing you need but I believe there are people in this room who if you were honest you would say I need healing and this is what I want you to do I want you to have faith and I want you to come to the front we have pastors we want to pray for you if that's you right now and you need healing and you're believing God for a miracle in your body in your marriage would you just come to the front we want to pray for you come on come come Jesus oh Lord Jesus you are a maker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, yes, yes, yes. A maker, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, yeah.
we thank you for healing that's happening in this place. God, I thank you for boldness to believe that your word is true, God, and that what you said in James, that if you need healing, to come and receive prayer. God, we still believe you're healing. God, we're declaring in truth that healing is happening, that marriages are being restored. God, that lives are being changed, that physical bodies are being healed in this place to your glory, God, because it's what you do.
for what you've done tonight, God. Lord, we thank you that in the midst of life that you care to meet with us. God, I thank you for your peace. God, I thank you for healing. God, I thank you for the families that are being restored. God, I thank you that in your house, God, it's a place of healing. God, that your house is a place of hope. God, we love you. Lord, we pour out our hearts. God, we declare of your goodness, Lord. I pray you would fill up every follower in this room, God, with new hope, new peace, new strength, God, to walk with you, Lord. God, we want to be molded into your image, Lord. I pray we would be sustained by your presence, God. So, Father, would you move in us? Would you move in our lives? We pray in your holy and precious name. Amen. Come on, give them praise tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, we're so glad you guys joined us tonight at Worship Night. We hope to see you on Sunday. We're continuing on in an incredible series. And I'm so excited because we're talking about hell on Sunday. So we're getting serious, all right? But we love you guys. Don't forget to love God, love each other, and change the world. We'll see you Sunday.